Hello friends and welcome to the second video where we are going to explore the Arnold Render tab. And again, like I mentioned in the first video, my goal with this is not necessarily go into much depth in all the settings. It's just for me to show you things you should be aware of and help you with your first steps. Then obviously you are free to explore, to learn more and to check the documentation. Um, I'm going to, after finish this introduction series, I'm going to start doing some, some projects where I'm going to explain more in depth how some of these settings work and showing real and practical examples of how you can work with Arnold. So one of the first things you need to do is go into the Arnold Render tab and just make sure you have the latest version. Uh, this might sound silly, uh, but the reason is when it comes installed by default with Max, it's, it's an old version. So you need to update for the latest one. And this is one of the things that Sometimes when you find a bug or something is not working, when you go to the Arnold Answers, the first thing they'll ask you is, do you have the latest version, right? Because probably that was fixed. Um, and the reason why that happens is almost like every two months, there is a new update for Arnold. So they are quite fast in not only introducing new features, but also fixing bugs, making Arnold more efficient in the way that it works. Um, so you, if you need to update, there is a, a, a message below this one will tell you there is a new version. When you click on that one, you'll get to this web page. And if you scroll down to the Arnold for Studio Max, you have these three versions. So uh, 2021, 20 and 19. Obviously, if you need something prior to 2019, if you scroll down, you can come to the download archive and you'll have access to, to the latest, to the to the one that you need, not the latest one, obviously. With Arnold installed, then we can come back, and this is one of the key areas that you need to learn. Um, there is no other way, right? Um, it's the sampling and the ray depth. That this is what controls the image quality. Now, I know if you're coming for something like, uh, perhaps like Corona, where you don't have many settings, this may sound a little bit intimidating, but in reality, this is the power of Arnold, is the fact that it's simple enough, that it's not too difficult to use, but it gives you the tools and the settings that you need to control the, the project that you're working on, right? If you're trying to use the same settings for all the projects, that will not work. You need to adjust the settings according to the scenes that you're working. Obviously, that is something that will come up with experience, but if you take... I don't know, I would say like one hour, two hours, and you just go um, to the Arnold documentation and you learn the sampling, you test, you try, you, you'll, you'll get the grasp of how it works. And then when, when a project comes up, you know how to use these settings, you know how to, to make the, the scene fast uh, enough so you can have good renders. And this is something I learned. Um, I have to be honest, my initial renders there was one that was taking 36 hours. Why? Because I thought, okay, so camera AA is 3, and I want to have a good quality, so let me go to something like 10. Um, obviously, you're going to have better quality with 10 samples, but it's going to take so long that it's not efficient. So what I had to learn was exactly this. I had to learn how to use samples, and this is something I, I'm going to do a video explaining how to clean noise and how to use samples. But it's something you have to do it. Right? You, it's not a case of just watching. You need to see it. You need to understand. But also you need to have a good balance because not necessarily you need to remove all the noise. Um, and this is this is one thing that it may not make a lot of sense. Uh, but the, the noise that it comes with Arnold is extremely powerful. And I was quite surprised with the amount of detail that it keeps. Right. This is one of the big issues with the noises. They tend to remove a lot of detail. But the, the noise, which is the Arnold denoiser, does an amazing job. So what you can do is a balance between samples, uh, render time, and the denoiser. Now, uh, another thing that maybe you, you want is, uh, and sometimes it's nice when you're doing look development, having like a progressive render, so you can see the image clean with the time. Um, it's based on the camera AA, so if you need to clean a little bit more, you can increase or you can use this option here called adaptive sampling. I, I honestly, I wouldn't recommend this for final renders because it can take a little bit longer. Uh, but this is a nice way to keep cleaning the noise from your scene. So uh, according to the adaptive threshold, which is, let's call it a noise level, um, Arnold will keep cleaning 
that section, that bit, until it, it reaches, or, or until it reaches the noise level, or until it reaches the maximum of 20 samples. It's a, a little bit of a lazy way to work with samples, but it's definitely something it can help you initially when you start working. Um, one thing I need to, to point is the fact that if you're doing a final uh, final render, don't don't use preview AA, right? The preview AA uh, means nothing, right? It's it's not it's not required. You don't need this for the for the final render. It's just for you to have a preview, a really quick a quick preview, so you can see oh the camera is wrong or the material is wrong. I need to fix that without waiting for the render to finish. So if you're doing a final render, just this, switch this off. Then in terms of rendering, um, if you're doing an animation, uh, one of the big issues that happens with a lot of renders is the fact that you have flickering. With Arnold, that doesn't happen as long as you use this option called uh, lock the sampling pattern. So keep that in mind. Let's go to the next one, which is environment, uh, background and atmosphere. Uh, the only thing I want to mention here is um, if by some reason you want to use your HDMI map into the environment map, um, you can do it this way, but then you need to at least put the samples the quality to two, right? Um, and I'm saying this because the, the sample lights need samples. This is something I don't think about it, to be honest, because when I create my lights, I always set up the samples to two. Um, that works most of the cases. Um, if you need to clean a little bit more of the noise, then obviously you have to increase it. But that's if you start that way, uh, all the all the lights will have the samples that it needs, and then obviously if you need to remove on the render, if you don't want to see the HDMI map, uh, and you probably want that. For example, when you're doing exteriors and you have vegetation, uh, if you leave the HDMI map and you remove the background, you still see that fringe uh, around the the edges of the leaves, which is quite a pain to remove. So if you use the background and you put it to none that is going to render black, which is a better way to work. Uh, another thing which I probably should mention here is if you need to do some volumetrics, so for example, if you need to do fog or if you need to do some God's Ray, you have two options. So you have the atmosphere volume, which you select. Uh, this will give you something like the God's Rays, but then you also have the fog, which works like fog close to the ground. So something quite useful and the fact that you control that through this section here. The next one which is really useful is this one called textures. Now textures, um, you don't need anything sp special in terms of textures uh, and you don't need to worry uh, about the resolution of the textures you're using. You can use 4K, 8K, 16K even if you want to when sometimes you're working with mega scans, it's completely fine, right? Um, as long you also convert those textures into TX textures. Now this is something I, I'll share the link explaining how to convert those textures, but I will also do a quick video where I explain the process and how it works. You don't you don't have to worry. You don't need to load those TX textures. Arnold does that for you automatically. It's just let's let's give an example. Let's say this is the texture I'm using here. It's called wood.jpg, right? and I convert it to wood.tx. So when I press render, Arnold is not going to pick the uh, wood.jpg, it's going to pick the arnold.tx. And this is something useful because it's going to speed up the render and allows you to work with really high resolution uh, textures as well. And an example I work in, in, a, in a live project was um, an interior scene was taking me something around like three hours, something like that to render. And as soon as I convert all my 4K textures to TX, and I use this option, and I increase the cache size to uh, 4096, my render time, it was, it was unbelievable, but my render time went from 3 hours to 55 minutes just by using this option here. So this is going to help you to speed up a lot the render. So it's something I, I honestly I highly recommend you to, to keep in mind and to use it all the time. And then finally, something was recently uh, implemented was um, these images. The main concept behind it is for you to connect uh, a bunch of nodes together, as you can see here. So you can do uh, color correction and grading of the render that you're doing. 
so if you go to Arnold and then you go to Im images, so sorry, so maps, Arnold images, as you can see, this is the ones we have available at the moment. I know more are coming and to be implemented, but then you don't need a specific way to connect them. You can connect them in chain, as you can see here, or is in sequence. And then even if you need to, um, you don't have to delete them if you don't need it or if you want to, to turn it on and off. You can do it by just going here to the enable button and just do it manually right then once you have what you need uh, all you have to do is just connect drop drag and drop um and then you can do the the color correction and the grading through these process it's it's um yeah it's an interesting concept definitely i think this is the first time i see something like this doing this way but it's something i can see how it's practical for example when you work in a studio um, a bunch of artists are working on the same project and one of the issues sometimes happens is uh, because everyone does slightly differently the, the color correction and grading images tend to look a little bit different from each other um, this is a nice way we can say okay this is the mood that we selected for this project based on the look development we did uh, you can sh share this as, um, as a material library so everyone across that project have, will have access to to the to the color correction or the grading that you're applying to to that uh, project and basically that's it that's the thing you need to know about the Arnold Reddit tab uh, so the next video we are going to explore the system and the AOVs and see how we can use them so thank you so much for watching uh, let me know if you have any comments um, any questions you have leave it in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them or to record a video explaining how to to do it